first fertility appointment. And the chickens are, it's like they know. They're very excited for whatever reason this morning. And I'm wearing all blue. Jay said, is that me deciding that I want a boy first? Probably not. <laughs> Come, go. Okay, relax, relax. Oh my gosh. figured we would kind of tell you guys all that went down because there was a lot of information thrown at us but so far I really like the doctor what do you think yeah uh, so yeah today's the first time we you know started exploring fertility things so very exciting um, you and know, if you hear little footsteps it's the dogs yeah. they wanted to be with us <laughs> you know, a lot of this stuff is like you know going into it you never know if you're gonna match with the doctor or you're gonna get like a good vibe but I'd say we went to this place here in the city had a very good, you know, first impression, um, and you know, I, I I'm pretty excited, honestly. Like it was. Yeah. He also, aside from being like our fertility doctor, he's also a OBGYN. He's a endocrinologist and something else. I think I just can't remember, but he knows a lot. A lot of interesting information. So did a lot of blood work, internal ultrasound, just to see how everything looks. But yeah, it was a really good appointment, very informational. He's very, um, what's the word? Like a... Direct, which I thought... And personable, like yeah. he actually cares. It seems like he really loves to help people and he's very interested about this stuff, he's passionate. I knew I was gonna like him the first like sentence that came out of his mouth. He was like, I'm a bit of a geek. And I'm like, yep, this is the guy for me. Yeah, so it was really great, just first appointment like we said. Now Jay has to go back on Friday to do a semen analysis just to make sure that's all good. I did tons of blood work and so this blood work is really more for genetic testing. Nala's over here. It's really more for genetic testing. What else? Uh, genetic testing, just checking, you know, your blood, just everything. Yeah, it's he like did a full like a workup. full workup. You know, it seems that he's had a variety of experience not just you know the same similar type of patient so that was really great and then also i have to do some other hsg thing testing i don't really know what that is basically but. to get her fallopian tubes tested to see if there's any like lesions or to see if there's any um right. swelling and if they're dilated so that's the biggest thing yeah so got a lot of stuff to do we'll probably see him in about three weeks but yeah. we're leaving for a honeymoon next week which we're really excited about that and yeah guess we'll see you guys next appointment or yeah we'll check in with you guys then yep why is she back here this is one dog and then this is the other cool as a cucumber just chilling right there what are we doing <laughs> what are we getting into? You wanna do your hair? Thank you for calling CCRM New York. You are at position one in this queue. Please wait to be connected. They said for me to call on day one of my cycle. Can you spell your last day for me? Oh, okay. you can send the nurse available for you, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, so I sent a message to the patient care coordinator app, but it's so stressful. I know they're super busy, but I'm like, every time they tell me to call and speak to a nurse, they're never available. I'm like, I wish I could just like email someone something, but I did through the app, which they don't really get back to you right away, so we will see but yeah i basically got my period today and so they told me to call day one of my cycle to i honestly don't really know so that's why i was calling them to figure out but they like kept stressing day one of your cycle call day one of your cycle call so i'm like it's day one and i'm calling so hopefully they'll get back to me if they do i will update you guys hello hey, good so i was told to call on day one of my cycle perfect so let's see yeah, it looks like you're falling right in line to where we would need for you to start. Oh. Sounds good. So is there anything I need to do on my end? Yes. 
So I just need a good local pharmacy for the nurses to send your birth control pills. So it sounds like you will be starting tomorrow with the pill. You probably will take it for about up to 12 days. So you come back 29th for blood work and ultrasound, and you should most likely start your injections by then. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Hopefully you guys heard that, but it seems like they're going to send over a specific birth control. I believe it's like a very estrogen heavy birth control, which I'm not thrilled about because the one I'm on right now, I think is like the lightest possible birth control you can be on like at all. Like it really doesn't affect my hormones that much. And I know this one definitely is going to, but it's okay. So I guess I'll be on this starting tomorrow for 10 to 12 days. And then I'll go in, I think, for like an ultrasound just to make sure it's like a good cycle, which essentially I think means like we're not stressed and everything's fine. I don't know. We'll figure out more then. We'll find out more then. But yeah, looks like I'll be starting this tomorrow. Hopefully my pharmacy gets it together because they're notorious for taking forever to give me things. But we will see. Hey guys, I feel like it's been a bit since we really updated you guys in this whole process. Actually, the first footage we filmed mm -hmm. was like a year ago. Our first visit. Yeah, so the first footage you guys saw, that was January 2023. We are now in January 2024. A lot has happened, like a lot. I wish I record everything, but a lot of it wasn't exactly positive. I know I'm smiling, I just do that when I talk about this kind of stuff. But a lot of it wasn't exactly positive, which is why we're... We're redoing this all a year later, um, but I figured this would be a good time to just get you guys up to speed on what's been going on. I did film a few clips here and there, which I'll of course insert, but yeah, I just wanted to like get you guys up to speed on where we're at. So the last update, I believe, was in the beginning of the process. That's when we said we were going to go see the doctor. We went, we both did blood work, he did sonograms on me. All was looking well. The only thing that was left to do was, I believe I needed to send in like pap smear results or something which very easier i think i already had mine done and then jay had to do um a sperm analysis he also sent our blood work for genetic testing and just like some other test right was it genetic testing yeah it was genetic testing yeah and so surprisingly our results for that was like the first somewhat negative news you could say so i was expecting mine to be not great like i was honestly pretty nervous because i have a really big family and unfortunately there's just like so many different health problems so i was like oh i i'm just prepared for it and with him he has a much smaller family and as far as he knows not really any health problems right no nothing nothing too major and so our results came back that mine came back I guess it was negative that I didn't have any. I forgot what it is. Basically, I came back, mine was completely fine, and then his came back, and I forgot what it say. I forgot what it actually was. But I'll try and I, find it and put the name yeah, here. Yeah, essentially I'm like a carrier for a uh, disease that can be found in newborns that creates like a very small percentage of a chance that that in individual newborn can die early on. Yeah, and they also said there's a chance that they wouldn't be able to like walk, would need like a walker forever. Just like, it's a very rare disease. I think it was what, like maybe like 15, less than 15% of people get it. Like, again, I'll have it on the screen to further explain. I don't really recall much of it. And the reason why is because we were very nervous, but then we spoke to our doctor and he said, because only Jay's a carrier and not me, that we're good. Went from negative news to somewhat positive news in that regard. So at this point, the doctor kept saying that his semen analysis results were not the best but he, that, that's really all he told us is that it wasn't the best yeah essentially he said it could have been the time of day it could have been an issue with collection so he wasn't overly concerned but unfortunately i couldn't really dig too much deeper into it because I, I unfortunately got laid off uh so that really put like a constraint on us and forced us to put a pause on the process for the time being yeah jay was working in tech and so if you guys remember back then it was like the huge tech layoffs and unfortunately he was part of that and so of course that was like our main focus we're like okay let's put a pause on this because although my company is helping me to pay for this i don't know if i mentioned that before but my company does pay for a decent portion of this process which we're so grateful for and a big reason why we're even able to do this I really don't think we'd be able to do this without them, at least at this point in our lives. We're only 27, 28, so it's just a lot of money. It's really expensive, um, but luckily, I think a lot of companies do pay for it at this point, especially in tech. So like I said, I've been blessed with that. But of course, we still are paying for a portion of it. And even the portion of it is a lot, still thousands of dollars. So once he got laid off, it was just like, okay, 
we need to just put a pause and focus on that. Luckily, I was able to secure another job, which allowed us to pick up the process again back in, in July. And so I did another semen analysis while Sierra was prepping for uh, the embryo testing, transfer testing. The embryo freezing. The embryo freezing. <laughs> also, I don't think we mentioned like the timeline of everything, but I initially went to see Dr. Levine in February. I was hoping to start this process as soon as we came back from our honeymoon, which was March, and that's when he got laid off. So that's why I was like, there was like a huge just pause and everything. Like literally the day after our honeymoon was when he got first, laid off. First day back from work. Yeah, like eight o'clock in the morning, first meeting. It was terrible. But like I said, so then from ap from that was like last day of March, so like from April until July, we just put a pause in it while he secured another job. So like I said, we're back up to July and he did another semen analysis. While we wait for those results, I was basically prepping for the embryo freezing because at this point we didn't think there was any issues. It was just like time of day, you just need to do another one and then we're good to go. So we were set to start the whole embryo freezing process end of July. I stopped all my medication and my PCOS medications, which honestly not fun because I feel like my body's so used to the PCOS medications and it really helps that once I get off, I'm just like all over the place. So it was not a fun month for me. I did gain weight and you know, it was during the summertime, but it's fine. I was like, you know what? I'm excited that we're able to do this. So then I believe it was like, what, seven days before we're supposed to start the process? I think it was? Yeah. Like a week before was when we got the call that his semen analysis came back and there was nothing. So at this point, we didn't know that there was nothing. I think the doctor was just trying to see like, oh, maybe it was like time of day, whatever. No, at this point he said there's literally zero sperm. You know, I think you should go to a specialist because obviously I can't freeze embryos. I could have frozen eggs by then, but our main focus was just figuring out what was going on. I didn't want to like freeze eggs and then like have to redo it again kind of thing. So we just put a pause entirely on that portion of things and then entered this new portion of things. And like I said, this was obviously very like alarming and not something we expected. We fully anticipated having to do this whole process because of me and my PCOS. Like I've known this for years now that I would most likely have to do this process from like the age of 21 getting diagnosed with PCOS. My doctor was like recommending I freeze my eggs from there, which I don't know what 21 year old is ready to do that. So I just always kind of had this in the back of my mind. And then once I moved to this company, I knew that they would help me pay for it. I was like, it's pretty much a no brainer at this point. But then, like I said, we didn't know about this other part of the process that we would also be dealing with and kind of a blessing in disguise that Jay got laid off because then he was able to go on to my insurance and now that he's on my insurance he also receives the same fertility benefits that I received which that was not the case in the beginning in the beginning I was only on my insurance he was on his because you know it was free for him to stay on his so why would he come on mine kind of thing and I didn't even know that if he went to on mine that he would have had the free benefits, not free, but that he would have had, you know, his fertility stuff paid for as well. So that's kind of something we figured out, which was great because at this point you were paying for everything out of pocket. So I think like yeah. each sperm analysis, how much? It's about $300 each time. Each time. And then if we would have obviously found this out eventually, he would have had to pay for this whole process, surgery, everything out of pocket, which definitely not cheap either because insurance doesn't pay for it. It's not like a necessity, I guess, to them. Um, so yeah, so that's where we were at this point. I would say this was July. Yeah, end of July. So from there, based on the recommendation of our doctor, I found a fertility, fertility urologist and was able to have a discussion with him, do a few tests with him. And we found that I had an issue with varicose veins, uh, which was fixable by surgery. And luckily, I was able to get an appointment for that surgery relatively quickly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, from July. Um, typically, he says it's about a four-month wait period to have surgery. But I was able to get um, uh, scheduled for mid-August. So I got really lucky in terms of that. Yeah, and the reason why um, they said that he needed a surgery was because he had a surgery when he was younger of like what first grade in first grade he had a surgery um i don't really know what it's called i'll have it listed here somewhere but he had to have a surgery and after that surgery he was obviously supposed to have follow-up appointments to like make sure everything was fine once he hit puberty um he didn't go to those follow-up appointments obviously he was young he wouldn't have known but because of that essentially it seems as if he's never had sperm this entire time 
which thank God we even did this process because I sometimes think like, what if I didn't have PCOS? We never did this and we're just trying to conceive, you know, naturally. We would have no idea. Yeah, and probably would have been getting frustrated. And yeah, like we really wouldn't have known at all. And like I said, the reason was because of the surgery. If he would have did the follow-ups and did all that, then they would have done this surgery to him when he was younger, and it would have been a lot easier to like go through this whole process. I, but. Even, I even think a lot of places say if you're having trouble conceiving naturally, you should wait 8 to 12 months and then start doing tests. Yeah, so we would have essentially been screwed. I yeah. mean, not that we're not now, but we would have really been screwed then. Um, but like I said, so the doctor recently explained if he did this when he was younger, he would have been fine, but obviously he didn't, so now as an adult he has to do it, which it's a bit of a riskier surgery, just because the doctor said that there was a chance that it could make things worse and then he can have nothing, so we were kind of like, not quite sure what to do at this point, but he ended up going through with the surgery, which I'll insert the clip somewhere here. Do I not have this on auto? Oh yeah, I do. How are you feeling? <laughs> Ecstatic. Maybe the best sleep of your life. <laughs> Yeah, so I had a very successful surgery uh, in mid-August, had a post-op appointment two weeks later, told it looked like everything went uh, correctly and everything was working. However, they advised that I would wait about three months to do another semen analysis uh, so the effects of the surgery could take place. Uh, so we had a little bit of an anxious waiting period until yeah. then. It was uh, until November. So yeah. from August to November, just keep in mind guys, I had it in my head that I was going to see the doctor in January and I was going to start this. I honestly wanted to start it right away, but then I found out I had to like stop my medication, all of that. So I wanted to get this done before summer. Like that was what I had in my mind. Like we were going to free something by summer. I could like lose the weight that I gained by then and... Easy peasy. I mean, obviously not easy. None of this is easy, but in terms of just, you know, let's, let's, let's just do this kind of thing. So now having to wait until November, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to, when are we going to do this? So about three, so three months after, uh, that was the first time I was recommended to go back and do another semen analysis. And we went from zero mo motile sperm to a singular, just a sing one. Just one, so... I know we're laughing, but I want you guys to know we have not been laughing about this process at all. It's just sharing this story and, like, hearing everything that's happened the past year, like, right now, it's just... It's just everything we did not think it was going to be. So whenever we're like sad or just stressed out, we tend to like smile and laugh to just help with the pain. But trust me, we were obviously very upset when this when we found the news out. Like Jay was like very upset. I was of course very upset because like this is not something anyone ever expects and there's only so much you can really do. Pretty much. Yeah, but on the optimistic side, so interestingly enough, my uh, urologist was actually relatively optimistic by this. Um, when I told him I went from zero to one, he said that's progress, and going from zero to one is a lot better than be going from zero and staying at zero. And he reminded me that, yes, he said the earliest I should do another semen analysis was three months. However, everybody's different and it can take longer to get like a more desired result. So as long as we're seeing some sort of, sort of progression, uh, that means I'm, I am on the right path. Although one is obviously not ideal, at least there was some sort of progress. So the next step was at this point, I was honestly just super stressed out because I am turning 28 um in two months and so i was no, like yeah. i was like you know what i have pcos i'm not getting any younger i think it's best if i just freeze eggs at this point i know it's not ideal i always wanted to freeze at least some embryos just because i feel like i heard that it's just better in the thawing process don't quote me on that i don't know anything i'm not a doctor but just based off of google that's what i heard and so that's pretty much what i had my mind set on that we would at least freeze embryos so then when we're ready to do implantation we are ready like 
can get the ball rolling. It's not like, okay, let's see which become embryos. Because it, it's a long process. It's not just like freezing your eggs and you're done. Like there's so many stages to this. It's insane. But at this point, I was like, you know what? Let's just move forward with freezing eggs. And in the meantime, Jay went to speak with his doctor who recommended that he did another semen analysis, which he did on Friday. Still waiting for those results. And then his doctor recommended like this special test. What was it? It's an extended semen analysis search. Yeah, so basically they just, if someone sits there, goes through the whole thing, tries to see if they could find any, what is it called, like? Uh, motile sperm, or even sperm that are not mm -hmm. moving, but actually still may be alive. Yeah, so basically it's like this external facility, this would be paid out of pocket, thousands of dollars kind of thing, which, not ideal, but still positive to know that this is an option. Um, so as of right now, he just did, like I said, the semen analysis Friday. Hopefully that gives us good news, because if so, we don't have to do this test at all and could save some money in our pockets. Otherwise, he will be going down that route. I don't know when. But in the meantime, like I said, I have started the egg freezing prep at least so i'm set to do it at the end of this month right now it's january 15th i'm set to start it pretty soon but yeah it's pretty much our little update as of now just wanted to catch you guys up because a lot has been going on i know in like my vlogs i've mentioned that a lot's been going on i've been really stressed out and i haven't really said why because i i wasn't even sure if i was really going to share this whole process because of course it's very personal and I honestly thought it was going to be like a two week thing and then I can move on until we do like the actual IVF but clearly it's been so much more than that and I just felt like I always share any tips, anything I can with you guys and I felt like this was really important to share for women who are maybe struggling with PCOS and even women who aren't and maybe just want to see you know the egg freezing process. IVF process and how this will all go. Right now, we aren't fully doing the IVF process just because we want to see what's up with Jay. So that's why we're just, as of today, <laughs> egg freezing. And then we will see the results, possibly embryo freezing. And then the transfer could be whenever we decide. We're not going to share that part with you guys. You guys will just have to wait and see, but it's not going to be right away at this moment. And then I also wanted to share this just to bring awareness to also just like the infertility when it comes to men as well. I feel like the entire, anything related to infertility just has such a like stigma against it. Most people are very like hush hush and just kind of go through this on their own. Like this really isn't something that we could just call up our parents or friends or t and talk about because most people are not going through the egg freezing IVF process. Like This is all very new. Like my parents never did this. His parents, like it's all very new, new information. So we really just have our doctors to rely on and our own research. So just thought maybe this could help someone. Also, like I said, the huge stigma against male infertility. That's something you never hear of ever. I have never mm. once heard like any video or anything of anyone really saying like you know it's not just me it's also my husband like we're doing this with each other it's kind of always falling on the woman's shoulders and so i just also wanted to kind of like bring awareness to that and also you know remind men to do your checkups as well do your follow-up appointments but yeah that's pretty much where we're at and we will keep you guys updated when we're when, when we know what's going on <laughs> this is what we got so far